Uh, hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name's uh, Jason Daniels, CTO for uh, Hybrid IT. Um, you'll guess what company I work for, uh, Fujitsu. Um, we're here today to talk about artificial intelligence, but before we do that, can you just put your hands up, please, if you can tell me the current temperature in your house from your phone? Okay, cool. Who can turn their kettle on from their phone? Really? That's geeky. Right, let's do a super geek check. Who can tell me the current charging status of their Tesla car? Okay. But, but that's the point I'm making, okay? We're, we're living in a hyper-connected world where every device and every person is connected, okay? And that's, that's pretty cool, right? Although it's not cool if you're an enterprise. You know, an enterprise is big, monolithic, not agile, can't move quick enough to compete and keep up in the digital era. Um, and this poses a big challenge, and it's a challenge that Fujitsu recognized some time ago, and it's a challenge that Fujitsu uh, are here to solve with what we call MetaArch. And MetaArch is Fujitsu's digital business platform. So you can't buy MetaArch as such. You can't say, Jason, can I have some MetaArch, please? What you can have from us is a collection of tooling, methodologies, that when brought together, create a package to enable digital transformation, enabling these big enterprises to digitally transform and compete in the new world, okay? Uh, and that's pretty cool. Some of the tech involved in that uh, business platform, uh, IoT, next generation blockchain services, big data, and of course, artificial intelligence. Now, all these great technologies need to be powered by something, right? And, and that power comes from what we call K5. And K5 is Fujitsu's next generation cloud service. K5 is OpenStack. OpenStack will power the digital business platform, it will power digital transformation for our customers, and it will power our future, putting people at the heart of what we do. And that's really important to us at Fujitsu, okay? Um, we're really lucky to have a uh, member of the Fujitsu team here uh, from our, our, our labs, Fujitsu Labs. Uh, and he's going to put the human intelligence into artificial intelligence, okay? Um, if you had seat belts, you should strap yourself in now for this one, okay? So he's going to talk about some pretty cool stuff, everything powered by OpenStack. Thanks. Okay, then. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Roger. I'm working in the laboratories for Fujitsu. And today, I want to talk about some of our activity in AI and machine learning and how we are um, transitioning that work towards the cloud. So actually, um, part of that uh, rings a, a, a strange bell in me because um, uh, when I look at the tools and we've been using OpenStack and we've been using Cloud Foundry, we've been using Docker, and of course we've been using Fujitsu K5, these tools are so great and they've come on so fast in the last uh, couple of years, five years maybe, that um, it's not a question of innovating in the lab on an individual machine and then go into the cloud. These tools are so great now that you want to use these tools right from the start. So when people in the keynote this morning spoke about cloud first, I think it's the same thing. We're using these tools uh, to help us throughout the whole innovation process, going from the labs and taking it through. And if I think about... Um, uh, some of the challenges uh, in the past where, um, I don't know, setting up an infrastructure really quickly or outsourcing uh, essential services like uh, OpenStack gives us, or deploying an application really quickly through Cloud Foundry, or setting up a consistent running environment. So all these problems in the past which took a long time and, and quite frustrating, they're starting to, uh, you know, there's so many great tools to help us now. And so it's been, it's been a pleasure to work um, uh, on K5. It's been a pleasure to, uh, to use this technology. So uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, some of the AI work we've been doing in London. And um, I'm motivated with a, an example use case in signature analysis. Uh, and then uh, and tell, tell you about uh, an approach to rapid engineering of machine learning solutions, which we call imagification and then, you know, more journey uh, to K5 there. So, um, 
So signature analysis. Uh, now, this is a, uh, an, uh, a topic which um, probably uh, with, the, uh, um, with the maturing of machine learning in the last couple of years has become uh, tangible and, and, and we can uh, work on this. So the basic problem is if you have um, a bunch of signatures here, can you say uh, whether a new signature is going to be an inlier or an outlier? Can you say that if this signature uh, is a good likeness for, uh, based on the uh, asserted, asserted other signatures? And uh, our system uh, allows us to do that. We've deployed this uh, on K5, uh, so we run in a bit different parts of the, I should move to the next slide because it has a system image. So we're deploying um, this service on our cloud offering. We're using um, the various uh, underlying technologies. So we use, uh, we have a signature repository and we, and we manage our signatures using Swift onto, onto OpenStack. And uh, the whole thing is circled by an API so we can, uh, um, exercise the API from simple applications to see uh, um, the service running. So the kind of things we want to ask here, is this a good signature for a person? Um, you know, or, or if you don't know for, for whom that signature comes from, can we have an idea of who that signature belongs to? And uh, can we say something about the consistency of uh, signatures? In the middle of the box here, um, we have uh, uh, some uh, neural network. We have this box, box here which we call uh, imageification classification. Uh, and um, I'm going to go to the next, next slide and we'll talk about what imageification means. But the general principle of decomposing, uh, getting it ready for um, running with these cloud technologies uh, is important to us. And uh, yeah, finally, the API as well, just wanted to mention. So now we drive the application for its API as well, but then you know, the bigger picture is we want interested in um, putting solutions together, which are uh, a connection of all these different capabilities. Uh, so there's an ecosystem, and we are connecting all these capabilities together inside. And applications are then, um, um, there's many applications as part of this ecosystem running through the ecosystem. So what is imageification? Because that's a, cl a clear uh, uh, aspect of uh, what we're doing. And essentially, this means uh, turn any data problem into an image problem. And uh, so the conventional or the often the common approach with uh, using or training a neural network is to uh, develop a neural network for every single problem. So you have your, your source data and you train your network accordingly, according to that source data. So this is something you repeat for every, t every single uh, problem domain. Uh, in our approach, uh, the thing we've been looking at, and we've applied to signatures and to driving and to some other things you'll see later, uh, we have a fixed uh, neural network, which is the, um, which we've trained for images. So it's a general purpose neural network trained for images which means that uh, um, it doesn't even have to have seen a signature before, but it might have seen cats and dogs, and uh, that network uh, can look at an image and can produce a feature vector uh, from an image, and that's essentially... Um, so the middle part, which is the, neuro the convolutional neural network, stays essentially the same, and for every application domain, we have a new uh, imageification box. So... Uh, you can see this here for driving. That should have started. Right. So you can see here that the, uh, this, this is a representation. So dri driving is interesting because it's time series data. And time series data um, measured by um, probably, well, in this case, uh, 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 measurements from the accelerometer. And we produce this thing here, which is uh, a visual representation of the data, of the acceleration, acceleration data. And our technique leverages the fact that as humans we can look at a time series and we can say something about a particular time series and we can compare it with other types of uh, uh, situations which are from the same, in this case, activity. So we produce these images and we feed them into the network and we make conclusions uh, based on uh, what we see here. 
Yeah, so the drive in, uh, so we have a different type of imagification here, which is producing um, images based on the time series from the driver. And we can ask questions of the AI and we say, what are the current activities of a driver? Maybe it's eating or using a phone. In, in this particular scenario here, we could use this to encourage um, safer driving or uh, uh, less dangerous driving. You know, and is it safe? No, yes or no. And again, we are using the same uh, um, uh, service, service interface here and decomposition of uh, functionality. And uh, another example is on 3D shapes. So uh, if you uh, had, and again, the same technique. So we are um, producing images, in this case, uh, images from uh, multiple perspectives. Now, if uh, you had uh, some laptops or some uh, mechanical device, a car or an engine, and you took it all apart, uh, could you say this piece here, what is this piece in the uh, engine, where does it match? Uh, and this uh, demonstration we have here, which again runs, uh, can say for a particular uh, shape, what is the uh, uh, potential matching shapes you have? So, you know, we're generating based on this shape here, we can say all these shapes are somewhat similar, again, generated from this imagification approach. Again, we have a repository, and uh, we can ask questions such as, uh, what is this shape? Uh, which shapes are similar to this? And uh, ap appropriate manufacturing cost um, based on previous uh, experience, is it likely to fail? So yeah, this is, uh, there's three examples there of this uh, technique and uh, we're confident actually that it's a very human-centric approach to AI because rather than getting into the hairy details of uh, tuning a neural network for every single domain, um, you think of it from a human perspective and how a human brain can uh, see patterns in, in, in pictures. We are using the um, this, a similar mechanism inside uh, um, a neural network. So it's a very human-centric way of thinking about AI and engineering AI and then deploying it to the cloud. So we've, you know, we're, we're, this is a, a, a journey which we are currently uh, in the middle of. So it's how we use OpenStack, how we um, can leverage uh, uh, these services so we do get high availability, robustness, all the, uh, those great qualities. Um, we follow an API-centric approach and decomposition of the various components uh, and using uh, uh, Cloud Foundry uh, as well. I didn't get into... Term well, actually, there's a, there's a breakout session tomorrow and some more of the details we're going to uh, tomorrow. Uh, so we use Cloud Foundry as well. Uh, that's it for now. Cool. Cheers, Roger. Thanks, Roger. So quick question before we close. Who uses artificial intelligence or has deployed AI on OpenStack? OK, so one person, right? So it's a pretty new technology with new demands on the platform that provides the power and the resource, right? So I think fr from an OpenStack perspective, this is a great use case to show the agility, the performance, and the scalability that OpenStack provides to enable us to deliver next generation artificial intelligence to people. Uh, and it really is about human-centric innovation. So putting people at the heart of everything that we do. Okay? Uh, and we feel that K5 delivers that. K5 is now live in Japan, live in the UK. Uh, so that's four regions in total. Uh, we're due to deploy into uh, more countries this year. Total of 12 plus countries, regions. Uh, 24 plus availability zones uh, at the end of the deployment. So it's going to be a large scale uh, cloud offering, public cloud offering, consumable by the enterprise, and by anybody else that wants to consume our digital business platform. Um, so from Fujitsu, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. We're at stand A tw uh, A20, I think. So please, we've got an Oculus Rift. You can have a go on, uh, as well as talk about K5. So thank you very much.